Hi, listeners. We're super excited to share the sneak peek at our new Spotify original from Parcast, Deathbed Confessions. It's an exclusive clip from our first episode. So if you enjoy it and want to hear more, follow Deathbed Confessions for free and only on Spotify. For Ray Long, October 24th, 1964 is a day like any other. He's visiting his parents' house in Beechwood Canyon. Beechwood is a quiet community tucked deep within the Hollywood Hills. It sits directly below the Hollywood sign, but it's certainly not a haven for movie stars or directors. It's the kind of place that people move to to escape the hustle and bustle of Los Angeles. Or perhaps, to hide. As he pulls up to his parents' bungalow, Ray spots a commotion at the house next door. It's rare to see anybody outside that old vine-covered hideaway. You know the kind of house we're talking about. There's one on every block. Neighborhood kids dare each other to throw stones at it and peer through the windows. For Beechwood Canyon, that house belongs to an elderly recluse called Patricia Lewis that no one ever really sees. Today, for some reason, neighbors are slowly congregating outside Mrs. Lewis's crumbling home, worriedly peering over the dilapidated fence. Ray is one of the few people in Beechwood that actually knows Mrs. Lewis. She's a nice enough old lady. Sometimes she comes over to watch TV with his mom. Ray runs up the back steps of the bungalow. And what he finds shocks him. Mrs. Lewis is on the floor writhing in pain. Her eyes bulge out of her head. Her frail withered hands clutch her chest. It's clear, Mrs. Lewis is having a heart attack. Suddenly, she lets out a cry. A priest! The old woman is desperate. Her cataract-covered eyes stare off into the distance in horror. It's as though she's glimpsing the flames of hell. I need a priest! Ray rushes to her side. Suddenly, she snaps out of her dying haze. She turns to him, terrified. I killed William Desmond Taylor. She begins to sob. She grits her teeth desperately, holding on to the life that's rapidly leaving her body. A priest! I killed William Desmond Taylor! William Desmond Taylor. The name means nothing to Ray. Most likely, you've never heard of him either. But in the 1910s and early 20s, William Desmond Taylor was the talk of the town. Actor, director, spokesman, Taylor was the handsome face of old Hollywood. Everyone across America knew this Irish immigrant turned movie tycoon's name. He was a beacon of hope shining from the West, the epitome of the American dream. But dreams have a funny way of dying in Hollywood. On February 1st, 1922, William Desmond Taylor, the silent film industry's golden boy, was murdered. Shot at just 49 years of age, his death shocked America. It was plastered across every headline for weeks. The LA police rushed to find his killer, but no culprit was ever found. Could old Mrs. Lewis's deathbed confession be the solution to Hollywood's most famous unsolved murder? To find out, only to travel back in time, back to the age of silent film, when the silver screen hid dark secrets and sex, drugs, and murder ran rampant. At the moment of death, people often have an overwhelming need to get their biggest secrets off their chests, from murder, fake identities, illicit affairs, and even government cover-ups. This show dives into the world's most explosive deathbed confessions. This is the story of Margaret Gibson, alias Patricia Lewis, of the words she spoke as she lay dying. It's the story of Hollywood's silent film era and the dark underbelly it so desperately tried to hide. It's about sex, lies, and jealousy. A secret so explosive, it had the power to take down Hollywood. Above all, it's about dreams and one young woman's obsessive quest to make hers come true, no matter the cost. I'm Estefania Hagman, and this is Deathbed Confessions.
Back in Mrs. Lewis's house in Beechwood Canyon, Ray Long is stunned. Could his kindly old neighbor really have killed a man? He never gets the chance to ask follow-up questions. Mrs. Lewis is carted off to the hospital and dies within the hour. Ray's mother tells him to just forget it. She was an old dying woman. She was probably just confused. It's a little strange how quickly his mother brushes it off. Almost as though she's too willing to dismiss Mrs. Lewis's strange dying words. Ray can't shake it. He decides to investigate. In the days following her death, it becomes clear that Patricia Lewis was a recluse in every sense of the word. No family, no friends. Certainly no one would help unravel the mystery of her deathbed confession. Ray Long's mother seems to have been the person closest to Mrs. Lewis. Checking on her from time to time, inviting her over for dinner or to watch TV. In the end, it appears her kindness paid off. Mrs. Lewis leaves her house and all its contents to the Longs. So Ray starts digging through her belongings, searching through old boxes and piles upon piles of yellowed papers for clues. At first, all he figures out is that she died poor, very poor. But then he spies an odd-looking trunk in the corner of the living room. It stands out against the tawdry cheap furniture that surrounds it. The trunk is also latched shut. After some effort, Ray is able to pry the trunk open. Jackpot. Digging through the trunk's contents, Ray finds black and white stills from old movies, by the looks of it from the silent era, all featuring the same beautiful woman. She plays lots of different parts. A demure farm girl, a sultry sex worker, a bejeweled flapper. At the bottom of the trunk, Ray finds what will prove to be one of the most important pieces of evidence. A glossy black and white headshot. Sad eyes stare at him out of a delicate heart-shaped face framed with ringlet curls. The name Patricia Palmer is scrawled across the bottom. Ray decides to confront his mother. Who exactly was this woman? His mom tells him that she was a silent film actress who went by the name Patricia Palmer. She became Patricia Lewis after marrying a rich man in the oil business named Albert Lewis. In fact, Mrs. Lewis had a lot of names, six aliases and screen names that we know of. But for the remainder of the series, we're going to refer to her by her original name, Margaret Gibson, Gibby for short. She doesn't know much about her career, but she was pretty famous at one point. Now for the big question. Could she have killed a man? Ray's mother froze. She too has a secret to get off her chest. A few months before she died, Margaret Gibson had come over to the Long's house to watch TV. A program came on that revisited the murder of William Desmond Taylor. Gibson started shaking, eyes fixed on the screen. Then suddenly she cries out, I was the one who killed him. I killed Taylor. I thought it was all forgotten. She then ran out of the house in tears. Ray's mother didn't know what to make of Margaret Gibson's outburst. She told her husband about it. He was a detective with the LA Police Department during the 1920s. He joined the force just after the Taylor murder, but was well aware of the media circus it created. He figured if they went to the police with their elderly neighbor's apparent confession, a similar circus might follow. The Longs didn't want that kind of attention, and they especially didn't want to bother the kindly old woman unnecessarily. So they decided to let sleeping dogs lie. When his mother finishes her story, Ray seems to let it go too, for a few decades at least. But questions remain in the back of his mind. Questions you're probably asking yourself at this very moment. Who exactly was Margaret Gibson? What was she hiding? Was she responsible for one of the most notorious murders in Hollywood history? To find out, we'll need to go to the event at the center of the whole mystery, the grisly murder of William Desmond Taylor. It's the morning of February 2nd, 1922. Imagine the bright California sun slowly rising over old Hollywood. Its rays reach the stucco roofs of the Alvarado Court apartment complex in the chic Westlake district of Los Angeles. It's an uncharacteristically cool morning. The bitter scent of smudge pots that nearby orange growers burn at night to keep their groves warm 
still lingers in the damp air. Normally, Alvarado Court is a quiet, respectable community. It's home to famous starlets and directors. Large date palms and boxwood shield the inhabitants from the prying eyes of gossip columnists and fans. It's an oasis of calm for the Hollywood elite. But around 7.30 a.m., the peace is shattered. Blood-curdling screams suddenly echo out across the courtyard. In this moment, Hollywood will change forever. Soon, the whole nation will hear these screams. And they're coming from apartment 404B, the home of famed actor and director, William Desmond Taylor. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this clip and want to finish the episode, be sure to follow Deathbed Confessions free and only on Spotify.